All right, in today's technique video, I'm gonna show you probably one of the most common questions that I get, and it's really one of the most important topics in baking sourdough bread, and that is using the poke test to determine when your bread dough is ready to bake. So I've prepared several doughs to show you today, all made from the same batch of dough, but proofed in different ways and for different durations. This way we'll have a good basis for comparison and I'll show you exactly what to look for when you poke the dough, how the dough should feel, how it should look, to, to determine when the dough is underproofed, when the dough is properly proofed, and when the dough is overproofed. Be sure you watch all the way to the end of the video because I'm gonna talk about a couple of caveats with the poke test, and there's a couple of reasons why I don't think that it always works in the way you'd expect. So what exactly is proofing? So proofing is the step in the bread making process that's almost at the end, it's right before you bake the dough. So we've gone through with mixing and shaping and all of the dough is been set out and left to ferment for some time period until it is ready to bake. You will start to notice that the dough will kind of undergo some changes. So you'll see some bubbles start to form. You'll start to eventually lose some elasticity in the dough. So it'll become a little bit weaker. And these are actually good things, but you don't wanna take it too far. And so the poke test, is one of the tools that we use to determine when the dough has proofed sufficiently so that it's time to bake it. So as we move from a dough that's underproofed all the way to a dough that's overproofed, what begins to happen is that gluten starts to begin to break down. And if you were to poke the dough when it's in an underproof state, that finger press into the dough will spring back very quickly the dough will feel very tight, and that's because there just simply hasn't been enough time to let the dough continue fermentation. As you move into the stage where the dough is properly proofed, you'll notice that finger press will come back slowly, and it may not even fully come back into to fill its, its shape in. And then finally, when the dough starts to become overproofed, that finger press won't spring back at all. I remember taking a course several years ago with Jeffrey Hamelman up at the Bread Lab in, in Washington, and one thing he said, I, I'll never forget, he said, you know, as we're poking the dough and as we're feeling how the dough is at various stages, we kind of need to pretend like we're a doctor. We, you know, we're feeling things, we're trying to feel what's happening inside the dough, what's going on below the surface. And it's more than just the things that we see and the aromas that we, we can smell. It's, it's really a tactile craft that we need to feel the dough, we need to touch it, we need to see how it's progressing, and the poke test is just another way and another tool that we can use to help us do that. So if the poke test is so great and it helps us determine when our dough is exactly perfect and ready to go into the oven, is it always used? Is there ever a case where it's not perfect or it gives you false information? As with many things in baking, it's never black and white. Things aren't binary. You're not gonna be able to poke the, the dough every time see the amount that it springs back and know that it's ready to bake. So there are some cases where it's not super accurate. And I personally like to retard or cold proof my dough often when I, when I do a sourdough bake. So I'll usually have the dough proofing overnight in the refrigerator to bake the second day. When you pull that dough from the fridge, it's not gonna show the same kind of plasticity that a dough would when you're proofing it on the counter. So it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be tight, and that might mislead you and think that the dough isn't springing back and it's overproofed. But the case is, is that because it's cold and because we've fermented it for a long time overnight, it might actually be properly proofed or it could even be overproofed and it's showing you results that may not be completely accurate. I still use the poke test when I retard my loaves in the refrigerator. And the reason is, is that again, it's another data point for me to assess how much fermentation has, has happened and progress within the dough. If the dough feels super tight and very dense coming out of the refrigerator, then I might know that it needs more fermentation time and I can leave it out on the counter a little bit to finish proofing before I bake it. If the dough feels really weak, thin, and super sticky and, and spreading, then I know even coming out of the fridge that it's probably been overproofed and I need to bake it as soon as possible. So while the poke test on a cold dough isn't extremely accurate, it still gives you a good sense. And if you're always retarding your doughs and you're always poking them, you'll start to build up kind of a slightly modified intuition for that poke test, and it'll still be accurate for you and the bread baking you do at home. So another case where the poke test may not be super accurate is when you're really pushing the boundaries 
on the dough that, that you're making. So a dough that's extremely high hydration might be very extensible and very soft and kind of weak even. And in that case, the poke test can be a little bit unreliable. But again, just like with cold retarding the dough, I would still poke it just before I bake it. So I build up an intuition for what the dough should feel like when there's sufficient fermentation in the dough. Finally, a dough that has a high percentage of whole grains or rye flour or a dough with lower gluten content, you're not gonna get the same elasticity that you would with kind of a traditional wheat-based dough that's at a moderate hydration. And again, it all comes down to tailoring the poke test to the type of dough that you're baking often in your home kitchen. Okay, so now we're gonna actually get to it and take a look at some of the doughs that I prepared. So I have several ready for us to take a look at today. These are all the same dough formula and there are doughs that have undergone a different amount of fermentation time. Here on the left, I have a dough that is very obviously underproofed. In the middle, I have the properly proofed dough. And on the right, I have a dough that is definitely overproofed. So you can see here in the underproofed dough, the dough is very tight in the basket. It hasn't relaxed sufficiently. In the middle, the dough is relaxed, but not completely and it still has some elasticity to it and it's not overly weak. On the right, the dough has relaxed too much in the basket. You have too much rise and you even have some bubbles on the side that show a very weak or thin surface. An underproof dough is simply just one that has not had sufficient fermentation time. If you give it a poke, it's going to have a poke that very quickly springs back. So the, the, the gluten in the dough hasn't had enough time to break down sufficiently. You'll also notice when you poke it that the dough is gonna feel very tight. It's gonna be very dense. It's not gonna have very much aeration in the dough. The dough, again, is gonna look very tight in the basket. It really just hasn't relaxed enough because there hasn't been enough fermentation. You're not gonna see lots of large bubbles or any bubbles at all. And the dough is just gonna look dense and kind of lifeless at this point. If we were to bake this underproof dough at this point, what would happen is when I go to score the dough, the blade might snag. It's going to be kind of hard to score. And it also will have incredible oven spring in the oven. So you'll get a massive rise in the oven with potentially some bulges or some ruptures on the dough, even after scoring it. And then the interior is going to be some large scattered holes with dense spots in between. So to fix this underproof dough, you simply just need to give it more time to ferment. If you have it in the refrigerator, you can put it back in. Or what I like to do is take it out onto the counter and let it ferment for some time on the counter and then test again, perhaps every 30 minutes or every hour, depending on how that dough feels. Now onto the dough that is properly proofed. So this dough has relaxed in the basket. And if we do the poke test on it, we'll notice that our finger press springs back very slowly and it may not even completely fill in the indentation that we, we made with our finger, but you will still get some spring back. So that shows that the dough hasn't overproofed. And because the finger press slowly fills back in, we know that there has been sufficient fermentation time and the dough has had enough time for the gluten to kind of break down a little bit more and the dough for, to relax outward. In terms of visuals, the dough won't have any massive bubbles, but you might see some bubbles on the sides and on the top and the dough will still feel elastic and tight, but not dense. And so it's not gonna feel lifeless. It'll feel kind of airy and kind of alive, but not weak or super extensible and sticky. So if we bake this properly proofed dough, we'll notice that the dough will have some rise in the oven. It won't be super explosive and it won't be really lagging or, or no rise at all. So it'll be right in the middle, kind of the Goldilocks there of, of rise. And because of that, we'll have an interior that has an even opening on the inside. I always like to say that's something I strive for is an even crumb, an even dispersion of holes throughout the entire cross section of a loaf. Finally, let's take a look at dough that's overproofed. So you can see that the dough has spread out excessively in the basket. It might have some bubbles on top or on the sides. And if you can see those bubbles, they might have a very thin membrane to them that's starting to show that the dough is starting to kind of break down a little bit and start to get excessively weak. If we do a poke test with this dough, you'll notice that the impression that we, we leave with our finger doesn't really spring back. It stays kind of pressed in. 
And in terms of the feel of that, the dough is sticky and there's just not much elasticity left in it. It is just simply proofed for too long. You'll notice that it may even have trouble coming out of the basket if you try to, to, to scrape it out before scoring. And then if you go to score that dough, the blade will likely snag and it won't cleanly cut through the dough. Kind of your telltale sign for a loaf that's gone too far in fermentation is a lack of oven spring. So you won't get a lot of rise in the oven. It'll be more of a squat loaf and you won't, potentially you won't even have an ear on the outside, which means the opening where you scored won't kind of peel back at all. And the interior is probably gonna be a little bit more dense, but it's gonna be different than an underproof loaf in that the interior will be dense with lots of tiny little holes instead of this look that kind of looks like a, a loaf that's just unfermented and, and tight. So you'll have a bunch of little holes all throughout and you likely won't have any large or or open areas in the loaf interior either. It'll just be one dense kind of interior. To salvage this dough, what you can do is you can just bake it as quickly as possible, get it into the oven. You won't get as much rise, but I actually prefer to overproof my, my dough than underproof because at least the dough has gone through enough fermentation. You'll get a super flavorful result because with sourdough, you'll probably have a lot more acidity built up. So it'll be a delicious loaf of bread. The other option is you can take that dough and you can dump it into a, a baking pan and spread it out and make like a focaccia or kind of a pizza, if you will. And that's one way to, to repurpose dough that's, that's overproofed and it's delicious in the end. In the end, while a poke test may not be 100% foolproof, it's just another tool that you can use as a baker to kind of build up your baker's intuition and learn to assess what's happening inside the dough, how much fermentation has progressed, simply by giving it a poke. So I hope this video has helped. Happy baking.